I love martial arts, but over the years I've restricted myself to only a select few martial arts, you know, like Jiu Jitsu and Muay Thai. But I gotta say, man, after watching guys like Jesse Enkamp and Sensei Seth and seeing the wealth of knowledge these guys have accumulated over the years from trying a variety of martial arts, yeah, it has definitely motivated me to broaden my horizon a little bit, you know, get out of my comfort zone. And that is why in this video, I'll be trying Krav Maga. Let's go, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Time, time. All right, all together. Get up. Good job, guys. Good work, good work, good work. Thank you, brother. Nice to meet you. All right, so behind me right there is Krav Maga Raleigh and that will be my home for the next few days. So the plan is I'll take a private class with the owner and head instructor Ken Richstad just to give me like a crash course on Krav Maga and then I'll take a few classes with them and in the end I'll give you guys my review. First things first though, what is Krav Maga? Oh, Krav Maga means contact combat. That's, okay. the, that's how those two words translate. But also it refers to the training method because Krav was developing through the 1900s. There were a lot of things popular at the time, you know, more traditional martial arts where the training didn't have a lot of contact in it. You know, forms to the air, things like that. And so contact combat also means in your training you have a lot of contact. Hands-on, you know, sparring, grappling, choking each other, all that stuff. So it's both for the training and for the actual real world application. So for for those that would be curious about it, can you can you give us like a, a history on Krav Maga? That's a crash course. Yeah, absolutely. How did it start? Who was the founding father? Why did it even start? Yeah, Krav Maga has a, an incredible history, um, and it was started by one man, Amy Lichtenfield. He was even as a young man, he was an incredible athlete. He's a champion, boxer, wrestler. Uh, I think a, gym, a gymnast as well. But what really kind of turned him into the, the guy to create Krav Maga was that he was Jewish. He lived in a Jewish neighborhood. And about the mid-30s, fascists started coming into his neighborhood and they're beating people up, vandalizing things. And of course, we know that this was just the first part of what became, you know, yeah. like one of the worst things that ever happened. Right? Yeah. yeah. So he started literally fighting back in the streets and training other people in his neighborhood to fight back as well. He took his existing experience. He took all this knowledge he got from fighting, you know, literally fighting fascists in the streets. And uh, that, you know, really opened his eyes to what was needed for, for self-defense for himself, but also for teaching other people, preparing other people to fight back. You know, people that weren't champion boxers and wrestlers, because, you know, not everybody's going to have that background, but they still need to be able to protect themselves. The private class started with a brief warm-up just to get loosened up, and then we transitioned directly into fighting stances. He explained that in Krav Maga, it is preferred to stand with open hands. Because okay. our hands, our fighting stance is 50% offense, 50% defense. So our hands are open because, hey, we're typically not wearing boxing gloves or anything. And also, we usually have hands open for defense, hands closed for offense. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we're not trying to do the best thing for a specific situation. We're trying to find what's going to cover the broadest possible base. Next up, we went over regular locomotion while active in the fight stance. Forwards, backwards, to the right, and to the left. We followed up with a movement drill where one person leads in different directions and the other person follows. We're gonna go different directions, everything like that. Just kind of stay with me. Essentially a simulation of tracking opponents as they move around without compromising your fight stance. Next up, he had us play a game of shoulder tag. And he explained that in Krav Maga, they like to play a lot of games. Because it's fun and you know, self-defense is like grim and serious enough that a lot of times we want to play games to to make it fun, to lighten it up. And it's, uh, you know, everybody, adults, kids, whatever, they like playing games. So we're going to play this game called Shoulder Tag. We're in our fighting stance, and uh, I'm trying to tag you on the shoulder. You're trying to tag me on the shoulder. Okay. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Exactly. Yeah, you got to be fast. You got to be fast. You don't get me. There you go. So that's shoulder tag. 
We worked some fundamental shadow boxing combos, specifically jabs and straights. He explained the correct pivot mechanics. Your back foot's probably a little far back. Okay. Bring it in a little bit. Okay. That'll, uh, when your stance is really long, it's hard to pivot. Okay. So bring that back foot in a little bit. Now you can push and we'll rotate the hip around more. Gotcha. So when you're punching, especially with this backhand, there should be a dent in the mat, right? Or a hole in the ground. Yeah. All right, here we go. And go. Go. Easy enough. Let's put them together. Left hand, fall by the right hand. Go. 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 Okay, easy, right? And then we move directly into hitting the bag. Kind of prefer these pads where it's on the body. Because that way, when you're punching me, you get to hit something really solid. You know, you get to hit something that's the weight of a person. And I get to feel what it's like to be on the other side of that. We started with two punches on the bag. Go. Then four punches on the bag. Good. And then he had me hold the bag to feel the punches myself. And let me tell you, those were some hard punches. Right. Woo! Go. Right. Oh. Go. Right. Wow. Go. Right. All right, so that's enough. Wow. Let's give you the feel of it, right? Next up, he introduced me to what they call stress drills. And what that means is we'll take any technique and we'll try to put it under stress. Because punching, even punching a pad like this is, you know, that's, that's just an exercise. Fighting is stressful, so we find different ways to create that stress. And to simulate that stress, we did an eyes closed drill where I pretty much stay relaxed. Uh, I close my eyes and then he hits me with the bag. And once he hits me with the bag, I got to go to town with punches, boom, 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 and keep going until he says stop. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Nice. Oh. Time, time, good, one more time, good job. Next uh, up, the Krav Maga handshake, as they call it, the groin kick. Like if I'm wearing the shirt, and someone's like, oh, Krav Maga, that's where you kick people in the balls, <laughs> right? <laughs> the whole time he was kicking into that bag, I just imagined one of those catching me in the balls, and let me tell you, that was not a pleasant thing to imagine. <laughs> All right, so that's a groin kick. Of course, I got my chance to kick the bags a few times, and you guys know me. I love to kick things. Nice. Again. Again. Good. Easy, right? To finish up that section, he had me combine the groin kick with some punches. Good. Good. Nice. Moving on from that, we worked some knees, and you guessed it to the groin. For us, our standard knee control is grabbing at the neck and grabbing the arm. Yeah. Which will you're be... Going, you're going cross. Cross shoulder. Uh, actually, same side. Well, I would call it same side. Right? Okay, so here. I'm, I'm here. Exactly. In there. Eesh, good. Eesh. 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 He corrected my elbow position. So these arms is like a fence, right? Okay. You grab there as well. Now, if your arm's really straight, I know you do jiu-jitsu, so... If you or me, you'd probably be thinking about ducking underneath. Yes. So what we'll do is we'll keep her elbow about 90 degrees. Okay. Even if they lean over a little bit, uh, you can maintain that. Right? Okay. When we're starting this fight, they're probably more upright. So this fence, if I'm trying to come in towards you, you can get in a nice strong stance. All right. You maintain that. If they're really big, maybe they're able to move you, but at least you keep the distance. Right. All right. And then I try it again. Good. Nice. That's stronger. Oh, good. Okay, great. Continuing right, with knees, we did a drill where I drive him to the other side of the mat with knees. And when you compare my slower one knee at a time style to his more aggressive consecutive knees, it highlights an important theme that I've learned about Krav Maga. Everything is about aggression. First number one thing is aggression. Aggression, aggression, aggression. I tried again, and this time, I think I did a lot better with the aggression. And there goes my mic. <laughs> if you're doing like an MMA fight, that's probably not a good strategy because you're a trained fighter against another trained fighter. Right. If you're a regular person with some training, a decent knee strike, and you have to, you know, someone... Bro, it won't take that much. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, because it's the mentality. Right. Right. Like maybe you're, you know, you might not even be landing those strikes well, but if you are trying to go forward, and you're trying to drive them back, then you've got the right mentality. Right. Once again, aggression, aggression, aggression. Moving on to self-defense, he showed me how Krav Maga deals with the classic rape choke. First thing we look at, what's the immediate danger? And we want to get as granular as possible. Okay, you're choking me. Well, right. that's a problem. The point is, it's really the thumbs. Gotcha. 
So we're thinking we've got some person attacking us, especially you're smaller, they're bigger. Well, if we can just deal with our thumbs, we can get relief from the choke. And we're gonna do what we call plucking, which this motion is all over Krav Maga. You make hooks with your hands, you make as big a motion as possible, and you rip their hands off your neck. I see. Next thing is a simultaneous counterattack. Okay. Whenever possible, we want to counterattack while we're defending. Look at that. Now our hands are busy plucking, so we're gonna take that free leg and blast them in the groin as hard as we can. Right? Okay. And my turn to try. That's so. it. Yeah, exactly. Get that. I love it when people are good. Right. It makes it so easy. Good. Awesome. Okay. All right. That's good. We'll do it one more time just for practice. And then we combine the pluck and kick with some forward driving knees. Good. Nice. And then we combine the pluck and kick with some knees and combatives. Yeah. Nice. Good job. Man, you got it. And then he had me put it all together in a stress drill. Let's go, let's go, come on. Good, time out. Good, good job, good job. Good. And good, nice. Good, rest. The last thing we covered in the private class was a basic punch block, and he explained that the reason the block looks so wide in Krav Maga is... It's because we have to be... We need it to work if it's a surprise knife. So, you know, if someone throws a big punch, you can just kind of block up like right. this, right? So that'd be our, our first block. Um, we call this a 360, because you block all the way around, again okay. with knives. You block up, it's like a, it's like a karate choke. Oh, here. Exactly, okay. 90 degree elbow, okay. nice and strong. Boom, oh, right, and again. Now again, if you're doing MMA. You're probably here. Yeah, you're covering, here. you're doing tight blocks, yeah. and it, it would be ridiculous to block like this, because you're going to be very exposed to other right. strikes. But if it might be a knife, it, don't cover. This is <laughs> right. not right. Exactly. Right. And we do have covering and everything, but again, we're going to start with like, what's, what's going to cover the broadest range of situations. Right? He goes into more detail. So what we want, I'll spend that right there, is you want this, if it's a knife, you want it to stop right away. I see. If you extend your arm, it's going to potentially slide down. Big problem, right? Because A, you get cut, and B, they have the knife back. I see. If it's too much bent, then especially if it's a bigger knife, you know, oh. it doesn't matter that you stop my wrist if that knife can still go into you. Oh, wow. Right, and so it does work against a punch, but it's designed if there's a weapon there. Okay. All right. He reiterates a Krav Maga principle of attacking as you block. Whenever we defend, if possible, we want to throw a simultaneous counter. Okay. When this attack comes in, you'll block with this hand, and you'll punch to the face with the other hand. Okay. Boom. Um, this. It, am I doing like a simultaneous? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and to make it more realistic, he put on some headgear handed me some gloves, and I got to work the block and counter. Good. 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 All right, cool. So, as the private class comes to an end, he speaks on something I very much agree with in regards to self-defense. Winning is all about going home safe. To me, the biggest difference between self-defense and fighting is that in self-defense, you don't have to win. You just have to protect yourself. Gotcha. Right? In fighting, you're supposed to win. Whether it's ring fighting or street fighting or whatever, you're supposed to win. In self-defense, it might not be a winnable fight, right? but can you protect yourself and get away? Gotcha. Right? Um, and here is a great example, like, you know, yes, we, we can completely defeat a knife-wielding opponent. We can hit him, we can go in, we can disarm him, take him down. But you don't have to. You have to not get stabbed to death. But right? the win is going home safe. Exactly. And that was it for the private class. All right, so headed to the first Krav Maga class, well, besides the private class that I took. And I'll be honest with you guys, man, I'm not really expecting anything too different from what I already learned in the private class. And that's no knock on them. It's just a very common thing with martial arts. You learn the same things over and over again until it clicks, so. And it really wasn't much different. The class started with shoulder tag, the same game he introduced me to during a private class where you try to tag your opponent's shoulder while they try to tag yours. Now, the guy you see me working with in this clip actually had more Thai experience and I could tell the moment we started moving. We did a quick warm-up, played a cute little game where you jog around and try to touch people in the back, 
and then we jumped right into the subject of the class. We started with some locomotion drills, just like in the private class, and then we did some jab cross shadow boxing, followed by combinations on the bag, where we take turns holding the bag and also striking into the bag. And then we worked turning elbows, something new that we didn't work in the private class. All right, so this is our elbow number three, elbowing behind us. So we prepare the strike. It also protects our chin. Look, and then drive off your opposite foot to send that elbow through. And we want to just hit through their jaw and see their teeth flying across the wall like a abstract painting. Krav Maga, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> In the private class, we also didn't work choke defense from the back, so it was nice to see how Krav Maga deals with that. When you get choked, it's really natural to come up and grab at their hands. So we're gonna take that natural motion and make it more effective by taking our hands, making hooks. We're gonna go way back, like we're trying to hit ourselves between the shoulder blades. We go way back and then pull forward and pluck down. Now as we pluck, we're gonna step and improve our position. Whenever possible, we want to hit with a simultaneous counter so we go right from our defense bang right into the offense and that was pretty much it for class number one all right so class number two was taught by cassie rhodes who's a purple belt in jujitsu and also a pretty damn good instructor if i'm being honest but a lot of the material was something that i have already seen before from the private class as well as class number one Class started off with a warm up and then we went directly into punching the bags. And then right after that, she showed some knees, very similar knees to the ones that I had already seen. From there, we went into a self defense scenario where an opponent is choking you from the front. Pretty much the same choke defense that we've seen pluck, hit to the groin, follow up with combatives. It really does work. A lot of the techniques they're showing, like it's, it's all legit techniques, which I'm really, really happy to see. But again, the second class was just a lot of repetition of the same thing I had already seen before. And then the class ended with a eyes closed drill. Again, something that we've seen where you kind of keep your eyes closed, the opponent hits you, and then you gotta freaking go to town. But this particular eyes closed drill was you keep your eyes closed, the opponent chokes you from the front, then you gotta perform the choke defense and you know follow up with combatives. Really fun class, man. Really entertaining, very engaging stuff. And that was pretty much it. Class number three was the most interesting and funny class. I mean, what is happening right now? And then after a fairly long bag hitting session where I'm starting to feel myself get tired, the instructor goes, Henry, you get to go again. Okay. Let's go. Pain. Now what about the part where we took turns choking each other? Start, start with them out okay. and then Ring your head. Yeah, that's yeah, you know, definitely tight on the Or this part where we start hip thrusting into the air. Don't worry, it's only questionable if you make eye contact. Damn it. We do a few classic bridge and drills and then move into the actual reason he had us hump in the air mount escapes. But this time, when someone is choking you. So now someone is on top of you choking you. So this is worse, because not only are they choking you, you can't go anywhere. What's our natural reaction? Probably still to come up with their hands. So we're going to pluck at the hands, watch this foot, trap their foot, and buck our hips up, the exercise you just did all at the same time. At the same time, we go up and over, roll on top of them, bow, 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 and finish. We practiced that a few times, and then it was time for an ice closed drill. There are two lines, attackers and defenders. Once he says go, the defenders will either choose to stay standing with eyes closed or get on their back. Depending on what the defender chooses, the attacker will either attack a choke while standing or attack a choke from mount. And it will be the job of the defender to, well, defend and escape. Andrew, you okay? Are you okay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, good job, folks. <laughs> 1,200 square feet of mats. And we still find a way to hit each other. It's, oh, yeah. It's, I mean, it happens it, it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> P people like magnets. Yeah. <laughs> I was, if you have four people in a class, they'll end up next to each other in a corner. Right? Yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To end the class, we played a fun game of tag. Oh, uh, yeah. So they lose that one, right? But yeah, but now I lost this one. So now it's kind of clear, like clearly I have to go for that, right? So you have to try to trick him, et cetera. I'll just leave you in suspense, all right? <laughs> ah! 
Okay. Yeah. I'm now I'd also have you guys start a little closer. All right, because you know otherwise, because <laughs> uh, otherwise you're. Yeah. And that was it. All right, so last day of Krav Maga, and I wanted to give you guys my overall thoughts on the whole thing. Uh, going into this, I really wasn't sure what to expect. A lot of reviews you see on this martial arts are not very good. Um, but leaving this, I got to say I'm quite pleased. The instructor was extremely welcoming. His students were extremely welcoming. Um, he was very generous to allow me to film in his school. And he participated in a way that I genuinely did not expect. So that's one. It's a very, very fun and cool place to, to, to show up and, and try to learn. Fighting, yes, it comes natural, but to actually know how to fight is about learning technique. It's about skill development. And with Krav Maga, a vast majority of the development that I'm seeing is mentality. All right. So to me, it looks like a place where seasoned martial artists can come, have fun and learn how to be more aggressive. You know, it's like the it's like the big, me the biggest message here. It's aggression, aggression, aggression. You're out on the street. Someone attacks you. You know, you don't want to be passive. Let's wait for that to. You're out on the street, you're in a bar or whatever, and someone attacks you. I think a lot of other martial arts will give you the tools to defend yourself in terms of like your technical skill, your ability to fight. But what Krav Maga will give you from what I've seen is that aggressive mentality. Turn on the switch, go, 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 go. Attack them as fast as possible and disable the opponent and get out of there. And other martial arts, they do a very good job of emphasizing that. But I think from what I've seen so far, like it, this, this is the most emphasis I've seen placed on that. Um, a lot of the games you play here are really, really fun, which is why it, it makes sense why a lot of people want to train this, this martial arts. It's just fun. It's a lot of games. It's um, a lot of like real life scenarios presented to you in a fun way. You almost feel like a kid again. You know what I'm saying? That is my thought on the whole thing. Am I going to continue training this martial arts? Maybe, <laughs> maybe it's, it's possible. Uh, if I do, I definitely know where I'm coming. I'm a big fan of Ken. Like I said, really cool guy, very good instructor, very good teacher, and all around great guy to be around for the few days that I've gotten to, to know him. So thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that.